So let's go deep on, on product led sales. Cause uh, yeah, you're an expert. It's something I'm dealing with right now at doc and, and I would love to, to learn more and pick your brain about it. And so, I mean, maybe we start with like a really broad question, like, how do you think about the role of sales and kind of a PLG motion and maybe what makes it different than, you know, more of like traditional kind of sales led motion? Yeah, to simplify it, I think there are two main differences. Um, the sale, the seller in a PLG business versus a non-PLG business tend to be way more data driven. And they are looking at who are the existing users on our product and how can I use information on how they are engaging with the product to inform how I want to reach out them to be way more personalized. Um, the second thing I would say is they sell, sellers in a PLG business tend to lead with the value and lead with how can I help you get more value out of the product rather than traditional sales businesses saying, um, you know, this is what our product does. There's this hypothetical value that you can get. Um, we're going to show it to you after you purchase. So I'd say Really, it comes down to being more data driven and intentionally leading with value. And is is I've heard you also talk about like the sales assist role. It sounds like yeah. that's kind of what you're describing, right? Like, how do you think about that role, and then what you know as a sort of emerging trend? And are companies actually hiring for for that sales assist role? So the sales assist role, to my understanding, started at Dropbox. They had a sales assist title, and then there were also product advocates at Atlassian. So those two were pretty, from my understanding, pretty similar. And now lots of other companies are hiring, whether you call it sales assist, product specialist, product advocate. Um, and what these roles are, in my mind, is a mix of sales, but also support, but also a kind of traffic controller of information. And so what I mean by that is as a sales assist person, I'm reaching out not to aggressively sell you on the product, but to say to the self-serve users, how, how are you doing? How can I get you more value? What questions do you have? Any blockers? Have you tried this other product feature? And what that seller can do is either A, help support them and answer any questions, maybe debug some things that they might have questions about, B, learn from them and funnel that information back to marketing, back to product. Or C, they can say, all right, this is an opportunity that we really think is right to convert to a paid contract or to expand. So I'm going to introduce them to my account executive. So it's this hybrid role that I think only really works at PLG businesses, but I have seen it popping up more and more. And how do you think about kind of like, I don't know, the different types of personas that are signing up to use the app? Like with with Doc, right? We have yeah. you know, sales reps, end users signing up. Then there's like the VP of sales, and there's the rev ops, and there's a ton of like noise in between. Like, I would love to kind of maybe go like through each of those different personas. Like with with the end user, how do you you know if a sales rep is signing up and starting to use something? Like, yeah, how do you use them in a way to actually get like a big big deal? Like, how do you sort of support them in that process? Yeah, there's a lot of different we call playbooks that you can run if you're a PLG company. So like you just mentioned, if you have a sales rep on the product and you want to help equip them with the information they need to then champion this internally, that could be one playbook. Or maybe you see that someone is an admin and signed up and you want to proactively reach out to them to see how everything's going. Do they want to add more seats? How can we help you? Um, there's a lot of common ways to do it. I, Lots of companies, we see a workspace consolidation playbook where, um, let's use Notion, for example, they may have, um, and they're selling to Apple. Apple might have a hundred different Notion workspaces within that domain, and you need to roll that up into one cohesive enterprise license. So there's a lot of different avenues you can take. I don't think that there's one clear path for every PLG company. I really think it depends on who your end users are and what, when and how they get value from the product and what the sales cycle looks like. Um, like developers, for example, if you're selling a dev tool product, they will never answer you. <laughs> so you need to figure out how to go above them to the VPN or CTO. So I think it really depends on the type of product that you have and the, the go-to-market motion that you find works best. And so when you get in touch with like that VP, whether it's like the VP of engineering or CRO or, or whoever it is, like, how do you think about kind of presenting the case? Is it just saying, hey, you have 50 users using this product, like time to buy it. Like, how do you sort of think about building that case and, and using kind of that momentum that you that mm -hmm. you already have in, in the product to, to kind of convince them to, to purchase? 
Yeah. So I don't think it's that dissimilar from a traditional sales business case. The only difference is you have more proof points and you have the ability to build an even more robust business case. Instead of going in saying, this is the ROI we think will happen when you implement our product, we can say, hey, we have already helped you do X, Y, and Z as proven by these hundred users on the product to date. We can help you get even more value when we you know, upgrade you to the enterprise contract. And we're also going to offer X, Y, Z features that don't have, that aren't available today. Um, so it is something that, again, I've seen every company do it differently. Like I think Slack in the early days, it felt very seamless. It was just, oh, there's lots of users. We should probably let IT know so that they don't get dinged and we can just pay like IT tax for the enterprise plan. I think Slack is an amazing product and not the same as most other PLG businesses. So it really depends on kind of again, who your buyer is. Is your buyer the CTO, the CIO, the CRO, or the CPO? That's going to all look really different. You. And I'd, I'd love to hear your perspective on like, when's the right time to kind of hire a sales team in a, in a product led business? Cause like, I know, I think Stripe added it pretty later on. And I think Twilio even added it like post IPO and it did wonders in the business. Like as soon as they added a sales team, it accelerated. And then Slack, I think famously was like, we're never hiring a sales team. And then yeah. did, and it did, and it worked really well. And um, yeah, I don't know. How do you think about that? Cause I feel like people are realizing sales can actually help and hiring a little bit earlier, but maybe I'm off on that. It's so funny. I feel like there's this like cockiness that companies have when they're like, we got so far without sales. Like <laughs> we're amazing. We're the best. And honestly, <laughs> every company you hire sales at a different time. Um, and it really depends on what is your product and what are your company goals. So if you are a company that says, you know, we have unlimited runway, we're not in a competitive market. We sell to developers. I would say stay PLG forever, like for as long as you can. You have, or you're close to being profitable. You don't need to accelerate revenue because you don't need to fundraise anytime soon. Um, or if like the founder doesn't think that's something, developers don't want to talk to salespeople. Um, and you can build the foundation of self serve and invest more in that than salespeople. Great. But what about on the other hand, if you're a PLG product but you're in a hyper competitive market, you find that your end users get blocked often on the journey. And you only have two years of running. I would say go hire a salesperson and figure out how you can accelerate that revenue and pull it forward and figure out, put a human in there to figure out what the roadblocks are in the customer journey so that you can make sure that you are, you know, constantly iterating. So there are so many people that say, you know, a PLG company isn't PLG if they hire salespeople before 10 million ARR. I think that's all BS. I don't know if I can curse on this. Uh, I think it's really... <laughs> You hire a salesperson, which when it makes sense for your product, your ARR goals and your company vision. Makes sense. Yeah. And I think of it going back to like the sales assist role. It's like you people, and we've learned this with doc too. It's like, you know, getting people to adopt doc is less even about how can they learn how to like click the buttons within the platform. It's like helping them achieve their outcomes, helping yeah. them kind of set up, you know, an onboarding plan and in our case, and, and, you know, there's like a little bit of like, uh, babysitting along the way where it's like, hey, pay attention. Come on. You you know that onboarding is really important. Like you got to follow through kind of the, the setup process. And as soon as we started being a little bit more like handholdy and being more proactive with people, we noticed like our revenue started started to go up. But you know, it's an it's an interesting, interesting balance, awesome. especially in the early days.